In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicast. Cast, the official podcast of Vundablog.com, the home of whatever. The podcast that Krang listens to in Dimension X. Well. Welcome to an awesome, this is a very special last episode of the Pop Culture Flowchart, and the first episode no. of the DCFU, which stands for DC Comics Forever Unlimited. So, what we can talk about... Mean? That means we can talk about, you know, DC, because we love, you know, DC property stuff. Okay. Always. Forever. And then Unlimited, we can talk about anything else you really want to, like, you know, Marvel or animated movies or anything, anything really. Okay. So we're so we're not we're not constrained by our topics, but we're galvanized. DC first. We're galvanized. Pray DC to the first. altar of but before we, Jeff Johns. No, before we pray to the altar of Jeff Johns. Yes. We're gonna lead this episode off by talking about a little film we were eagerly anticipating this summer. Turtles? Turtles 2, <laughs> Out of the Shadows. Yeah. And Out of the Shadows, this, this review comes forth. What well, can you do in the shadows with us? We haven't done a review on this? No, we just did uh, a couple weeks before the movie came out. Yeah, the commentary. We did a commentary on TMNT 2, Secret of the Ooze. Well. And I've actually seen Turtles 2, I think like two times all the way through. What do you mean? In your whole life? No, no, no. Not that... I mean, Out of the Shadows. Oh, you saw it again? Yeah, because I saw it with you. Yeah. And then I saw it again with uh, with Danny's brother. In the movies? Yeah. Oh, cool. Kind of the Turtles. Support the Turtles. Gotta support Casey Jones. Gotta support Stephen Amell. Yeah. What's up? Even though Arrow's kind of... Uh, you know? <laughs> Unfortunately, I... Were you caught up on Arrow? Yeah, I saw last season. Oh, I haven't seen last season. Unfortunately, um, with Turtles, it didn't make it, and I don't think it made enough money to, to make More another a sequel? one. Um, it only made like eighty million domestic. Studios are idiots. They're spending way too much money. Much too money. Much too much. <laughs> too money. Much <laughs> too much. <laughs> They're making too much money. Because you know what happened um, was these movies. Is that the last movie made? Um, it made like 191 million domestic, right? And worldwide, it was like close to 500 million. So they actually, so the last movie they spent like 125 to make uh-huh. it. So they were like, let's add on 10 million. So they were, so they made this one for 135. But the thing is that the last one. But did one, that make it 10 million dollars better? No. But the, the, here's the thing, though, where they messed up. See, is. It's the Guardians of... The, I call it the Guardians of the Galaxy, Suicide Squad, Ninja Turtles, sweet spot of August. Yeah. Where, like, you get that first week of August, and everything that follows are shit movies. And you could you could own the whole entire month. You could own the month. whole month, yeah. So when that first Turtle movie came out, it, it was isn't that August. it's shit movies. It's just that, like... They're just not blockbusters. Yeah, it's, it's not the same quality of blockbuster as you have in June I'm sure there's still, like, good movies, yeah. but there's but not see, blockbusters. The movie people think, oh, if we get, like, you know... We get an earlier spot in the summer, then our movie will last all summer. You know that's their rationale: make more, more money all over the summer. But that's how it but actually happened in reverse, where like there's too much competition. There's too, so much competition that you get kicked out faster. So like it happened, you know, it happened to that. It's happening to Star Trek. It's happening to Ghostbusters. All those movies are getting kicked out like fast out of theaters, and they didn't make enough mm-hmm. money to but like. M- the thing is, is I remember. The original Star Trek, or J.J. Abrams' original Star Trek, 2009, yeah. 
That made bank. That made movie bank, but that movie came out in May, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but think about this. And it rocked the summer for like two months hard. Yeah, but think about this. You go back. Go back to May. I mean, right now, we probably can't look it up, but go back to May of that year. How many block... But like now... What was this competition? Yeah. Yeah, like um, around the time that X-Men Apocalypse came out, like there were like at least three... It was like it was like back to back. It was like dude, you could have done Civil War. It was X-Men Civil War and X-Men Deadpool. And Tur- Deadpool was still out and Turtles. You could have done all four of those. Hey, Vundacast listeners, this is Steven interrupting the Vundacast already in progress to advertise my new podcast that is dedicated to my favorite movie, Big Trouble in Little China. The show is called simply BTILC. We have cool interviews with Gerald Okamura and Big Trouble in Little China fans just like you. Check it out at btilc.com. Tweet and follow us at BTILC Podcast and Facebook.com. Search BTILC to like it. BTILC is a Rad Bordy podcast, so you can find it on the front page of badbordy.com. And you can use the code Big Trouble to save 50% off a of Bad Bordy membership. And now, more of the Vundacast. It is I. Stephen of the present asking Stephen of the past to hold on one second and interrupting his thought because unfortunately uh, on this episode we had some technical difficulties here to smooth over these technical technical difficulties with me I Stephen have the wonderful Danielle how you doing Danielle you goofed up dum dum I didn't goof up I really don't know exactly what happened on this recording but for some reason you're about to hear there's like a buzz. That like is in a couple of sections. If anyone's an audio expert buzz, and knows how to get rid of this buzz, it's sort of like a ticking buzz. It's very strange, but um, I think we probably just like got too close to Krang's, you know, Dimension X mm-hmm. in our podcast, and it caused some interference with my humanoid uh, protocol. Don't say it was a ghost. If you play it backwards, it's Lincoln's ghost telling us who his real killer was. Yoda. Yoda killed Lincoln? Mm-hmm. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, he did. He was a good as Yoda, oh, he is 900 years old. I guess that mm-hmm. would make sense. That would, like, line up perfectly, mm-hmm. right? He was a good as my grand because Abraham Lincoln was actually an evil space robot. He was like a Sith, a Sith evil? Yes. That's why he always wore black. Yes, and a top hat. And, an, and, he, had, and he probably hat. had, like, a lightsaber axe. Yes. Damn, I wish someone cared enough about this podcast to do fan art, because that would be awesome. I know. Abraham a Sith, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln with a lightsaber with a axe? lightsaber axe. Oh, come on, somebody. Think of, think of somebody. Ass. That'd be yeah. awesome. Also here we have Duke and Gina who are unconscious and asleep. So that's a good sign. Oops. No, I'm kidding. Hopefully this podcast doesn't have so much buzz on it as well. So I thought since we have some technical difficulties, I thought I'd give you a little bonus. Stop buzzing. You're not a bee. You're not <laughs> static. So I thought we'd give the, the listeners a little extra. Mm-hmm. You know, a little extra, you know. It's basically like if we messed up your order, you know, at the oh, Burger shoot. King, we would just give you extra fries or something you know to make up awesome? for it. Because we have sound effects now. On demand. Oh, no. Not that. <coughs> that is not coming from us. That is coming from my officially licensed Minions fart gun. The fart gun. <laughs> the bold choice in modern warfare. <laughs> I'm sure the NRA is, like, really proud of fart guns. Yeah, I'm sure. They yeah. sanction them. They do. Mm-hmm. They, they fight for all gun rights. We need a guy, like, you know, like, in um, Parks and Rec, Ira and the Douche? Mm-hmm. They just have that guy that sits in the back with yeah, a computer. Yeah, their Asian producer. Yeah, and he always just, like, knows the exact yeah. time to put the right terrible sound effect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we need that guy. It would be great if, like, in the Idiocracy future... Like, fart guns had, like, taken over real guns. So, like, the Second Amendment was re-bin- was rewritten to say the right to bear farts. That'd be great. Right? It's idi- Idiocracy to bear up now. The right to bear farts. <laughs> Donald Trump is president again for his 59th term. Ugh. I know. It's so weird. 2016 sucks when, like, the guy... Everyone's talked about for a year is Donald Trump. 2016 was a shitty year. 2016 like, sucks. 2016, you know, obviously, like, everybody 
has some good things and some bad things and you know but like as a whole i feel like the mood of 2016 has been really shitty when we've been losing a lot of cool people but we've been gaining a lot of fucking idiots yeah we we, we did a podcast once called looking forward 2015 this is definitely called like looking forward 2017. Jesus Christ, the 2016 love of God. doesn't get one. Sorry. The love of God. I mean, like, it's just this is the year that like America learned that our you know we always thought this is like we a always shift. hated we always hated like like we didn't hate they were our allies but we always like were annoyed at our British like brothers and sisters in arms because we always mm-hmm. thought oh um you know they're so much they're snooty and they think they're so much smarter than us and and now we've learned no they horribly are not (laughs) they are not as they're just as 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 dumb as some of the general population of our country just as filled with fear and hate and bigotry and that's really like you know we're just all equally like the worst uh, and that's crazy to me because I never thought that would happen. I never thought that we would get to a point where, like, uh, our British compatriots, we felt like, hey, you know what? You're not, like, better than us. <laughs> You're not better than us. You know what I think it is about 2016? I think that, like, maybe 2016 is the year that we realize, like, the 20th century is over. Is it? You know? Oh, you mean, like, the 20th, like, oh. Like, this is, saying. like, the last remnants of the 20th century getting 20th, shaken off. But the 20th century has kind of been over for, like, a For while. 16 years, I know, but it really hasn't. Like, we still feel like we're yeah. in the 90s, like, sort of, you know what I mean? Or, uh, yeah, maybe. maybe, just us, I don't know. Maybe. But now it's finally, like, this is the 21st century, like, this is how dumb we've become, and this is how advanced we are, and, I just, you know, all like, that I stuff. I don't like to say that and we're... And our celebrities from the 20th century. But I don't like to say dead. collectively that we're more we're less intelligent i don't think that's the case i think that no no. i think that we're experiencing growing pains and i think that i think you're right i think in this way i think in 2016 the internet is really like a part of our lives now and we have an entire generation of kids that are now at the age they do not remember ever living without the internet internet. first society they're the internet first society and i think that that a lot of with great power comes great responsibility and i feel like we don't always wield our power responsibly, but we're learning. The internet tells you way more stuff. Some stuff you may never even have yeah. wanted to know. We know way a, a lot more, and it's kind of scary because it's just like we know. Like that's the thing is that I, you know, some people like to go. They love to complain like, "What's the matter with these kids today?" And what's the matter? Which I mean is an age-old complaint of the old. But like, what's the matter with these kids? Or everybody's so much worse. I'm like, no, everyone is not worse. You're just getting to see all that ugly shit that your mom and pop sitting in a white picket fence never got to see. Well, you know what I mean? Like, no, but it's true. It's not that anything is worse. Things are actually a lot better compared to where we were 60 years ago, 50 years ago. Crime is down no matter what anyone has you believe. You know, there are vi- certain vi- certain forms of violence are down. Mm-hmm. Certain forms of crime are down. Certain forms of, of, of certain things are down. You know, like that, that, and those make a big difference. And, but it's just the, now everything bad gets put on the internet. Yeah, everything yeah. good gets put on the internet, but everything bad gets put on the internet too. So you get to see this is what hit children in the Midwest or, or you know kids like unfortunately in the hood do when they're bored and they have mm-hmm. nothing to do they beat each other up and they shoot stupid guns and blow each other up and yell at each other and get into st- to dumb fights and stuff like that and like and then you get to see all the terrible racialized violence and all the gender violence and stuff like that it's like it's just we're just more aware yeah. and as my short story teacher said Stuart I know I can't remember his last name I just remember his first Stuart don't call him Stewie he didn't like that <laughs> um, he said, you know, he's like, well, he said, but he paraphrased a literary writer. He's like, knowledge increases sorrow, and it's kind of true. Like, yeah, it's, ignorance it's, is bliss. It's a fancy ignorance, way of saying it's ignorance. Is yes, bliss. it isn't. A, it's a fancy way of saying ignorance is bliss, but it really is. Like when people people don't understand, ignorance is bliss. Not knowing things For sure. makes you happy as hell. For sure, you feel like you live in a little bubble. You're like, yeah, I don't care For about sure. that. Cloud nine's the best. Cloud nine is the best. So on that note, is that a pause? I thought this no, was a whole thing. No, I didn't pause. Thing. This is a whole thing. I thought this was like a blip. No, Are we this is blipped? 
No, I well I cut out the part where I said God damn it in the beginning. Okay, cool. But I don't really have Where'd that. Where'd you part. listen to that? Um, but on on that note, um, this is the no, perfect not on that transition. Note. That's a sad note. No, on that note, oh, exactly. Oh, you're gonna give a happy note. We are going to talk about heroes in a half shell, turtle power, the real tragedy mm. of the universe. The Ninja Turtles aren't real. They're just fictional heroes. Yeah, they're fictional heroes. Because if they were here, they could, uh, like, solve all society's ills. If they were here, they'd probably like, be Like, cure pizza terrifying. and... And they'd smell and like turtle. Ew. Yeah. That would be nasty. They'd smell like That's turtle. That's why I live in a sewer. That way you can smell like, like piss and poop, right? Great. Turtle and poop. And piss. Don't forget and the delicious. piss. Delicious. You can't forget the piss. You can't forget the piss. Yeah. And probably like rat too, because it just turned right. into a rat. Mm-hmm. So it'll smell really that, That's probably a good like thing though when they're fighting crime, right? Like, because like they can't sneak up on someone, I guess. Like the ninja thing is kind of messed up, but they can intimidate someone and be like, "Man, next time I smell turtle pee poop, I'm gonna like you know have a flashback to when the turtle kicked my face in." Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going into turtle pee poop territory again. <laughs> That old song. Uh, you know, oh, <laughs> perfect. The fart gun always wins. If they had put that in Turtles Out of the Shadows. What, them farting? The fart gun. This? The yeah. Minions fart yeah, gun? that movie would have made another $500 million. Was that Nickelodeon too? Would they have done the fart Yeah, they could have. I guess you're right. It was Nickelodeon Nickelodeon. They should have had Michelangelo bust out a fart gun and shoot totally. Raphael in the face. They could have sold like 10,000 more fart guns. Mm-hmm. I'm right. pretty sure they sold a lot of fart guns there. Right, or have Donatello rig a fart gun to I like go even, off in the Empire State Building I or something. I bet even any like parent that bought this for their child secretly broke yeah. it in the middle of the night yeah. when they were like asleep because the kid was just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that weird. Yeah, it's because parents don't like toys that make noise. It's not. It's not a hot thing to have around the house while Which you're hanging out. Which is why, out. if I were a supervillain, I would yeah. only have toys that make noise. You'd have like a charity just for like noisy toys, noisy toys for noisy children. Just noise all day. We believe in noise therapy. Yes, <laughs> I'm weeding out those who wish they were parents. Does your child want a drum set? Just <laughs> constant screaming. <laughs> Does your child need a screamophone? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? a screamophone? It's a xylophone we invented to hear with screams. Screams, bling, bling. Ah! So far, only goth children play it, <laughs> but they love it. It's some little kid in the corner with like black eyeliner and like a. Oh, 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 oh. It's as dark as my soul. You're six, Timmy. I think my. Don't C- call me Timmy. I think my C minor is in is in is flat. <laughs> um. So turtles out of the shadows. Sorry for the buzzing and. Uh, you know, you know, it's like like Vigo says, you are like the buzzing of flies. Just kidding. Oh my God, what if it's a secret message from Vigo the Carpathian to our podcast that he wants to be on as a guest? theater comic book based films yeah but because those movies were so like packed together I don't think any of them made as much money as they could like Civil War made more money than all of them um probably the most of out of any comic book movie Mm -hmm. and still like people were still talking about it like you know what if 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 X-Men and like Turtles weren't out like so soon right after it it could have probably even made more money because just like two or three weeks later, X Men came out. You know. You know what would be an interesting strategy? What? These studios like colluded and said like, "All right, there's gonna be four comic book movies coming out this summer. Let's all drop our movies on the same weekend." You're crazy. Yeah, let's nobody all drop would make all, money. No, but they could last longer because they all like got their spot in. No. No, that would totally... You no, know, that just kill everything? That'd kill everything. Nobody yeah. would make money. No, but then we'd get to really vote with our dollars, bro. Because here's the thing. Then we'd really get to vote with our dollars and show our allegiance to Marvel or DC. <laughs> we couldn't simper about Batman v Superman all year and talk about how Civil War was great. And then when Civil War comes out, just be like, oh yeah, whatever, whatever. I hate them. 
<laughs> See, that would split the audience too much because, like, okay, like now Batman comes out in March and then in May comes out Civil War. So, like, you could still get those DC people to come to Civil War and you could get those Marvel people to come see Batman vs. Superman. But if I you drop make them, them both choose. Of the, which originally Batman vs. Superman was going to be on that Civil War date. I know. And they backed out. And I wish they hadn't. I'm glad they did. <laughs> yeah, they would have looked a bit embarrassed because <laughs> they would have looked they like gotten shit torched. movies. But I, I think it would have been cool though. Yeah, that would never happen. No, it's too bad. Um, I just think studios now, they're packing in uh, too many blockbusters like back to back, you know? And that's the thing that's happening right now with Suicide Squad. I think Suicide Squad is making so much bank right now because it doesn't have like any other big competition until like Doctor Strange, I guess. Well, the thing is, is that it's not that it doesn't have the competition because the competition is still in theaters. Is that people already saw those movies? Yeah, you know, and that's the last new movie. And I heard it's like testing. It's not testing, but it's like doing especially well with like you know real teenagers, like real young yeah, people, so like real young people, and also uh, with movie. minorities, which a lot. Some Ooh. of the other movies didn't because they're so white. God damn you, JJ! You're white. <laughs> Star Trek your vision of white people I love you JJ it's well they had Zoe Saldana and, and um, um what was that girl name what was that girl not, name not, I forgot the her girl name. name Jayla right Jayla but her real the name green skin girl cool the white with Alice black Eve? white with black stripes oh the Asian chick right is she Asian she's she Indian Asian or, something? or something yeah yeah I forgot Asian. her name I don't know. She was really good though in the movie. No, you, you know my favorite. You know what my favorite thing to do in Star what? Trek Beyond World is what they made like this like uh they put all the dub smashes that they did on on the set together, right? Oh, I don't think I saw those. You haven't seen that yet? Oh my god, I'll send you the link. Okay. But basically, it's just like everyone on the set, like on the set of Star Trek Beyond, doing dub smash. You know what dub smash is? Where you like just like voice, you, like basically just mouth the words to like either like a video. Or especially to songs, you mount the words and lyrics to songs. So basically, it looks like McCoy <laughs> and uh, and Captain Kirk are just constantly singing like Guns and Roses and well, like all awesome. these like silly, you know, like eighties bands, Duran Duran and silly. stuff. That's awesome. I know, but awesome. it's as if when they were on this mission, they just okay. were like singing the entire time and hanging out. That's and exactly then it's really sad the too because they have like a lot of footage of like Anton Yelkin singing and having fun. Oh. And like, man, I'm That's so sad nice. about that. Uh, we were just like a let's moment. start. Let's start at Turtles, and then we'll work our way up to Star Trek. No, I, we're not talking about Star Trek anymore. Other than to say, we miss you, Anton, and uh, we're sorry that uh, you died. Um, it sucks. Oh right, we can talk about Star Trek because somebody fell. Asleep. <laughs> I've been working so hard that <laughs> yeah, I has. neglected sleep and podcasting. Yes, and nothing else. Yes, <laughs> too hard. Steven. you got to take a break. Too hard. Do a podcast. So um, turtles, turtles, I I like turtles actually more the farther away I get from turtles out of the shadows. What? Yeah. What does that mean? Like when I first like walked out of the theater. Yeah. I was kind of like, oh god, this is the movie they made. No, you were like, uh. I was like, I didn't think it was that. I, bad. I wasn't impressed. I wasn't like you know over the moon. But now now that I know what it is and I've seen it a few times, like I appreciate it. Like I appreciate how silly and like wholesome and like. Goodnessy and goody two shoes it is, you know. Yeah, it was it was okay. It wasn't. I don't think it was that bad. It's just um, it could have been better. I think I felt like Krang was very underdeveloped as a character. Yeah, he was just kind of like thrown. And I'm not sure if I really left, uh, uh, liked field. Brad Garrett as much. His voice. Did you? Um, he was kind of goofy. In retrospect, though, now knowing that maybe they're not going to do a sequel. And how do you have Shredder in a movie? And then having have his and mask and a... Not even his mask, but he, he fights nobody. Yeah, he fights stupid. no one in the movie. He tries to fight Krang yeah, and he just stupid. gets frozen yeah, and thrown away like a piece actually, of garbage. That's really stupid. That's, yeah, that was one of the big problems. But the thing is, and, is and, wait, at wait. least they went for, like, you know, the Technodrome. They went for Bebop and Rocksteady. Like, at least we got to see that if they're not going to make a sequel. At least they got it now. Right? But, but, you got Bebop and Rocksteady... But they fought the turtles for maybe like two seconds, right? When they were in that plane, and then that's it. That's they it. never fought again. That's it. That was it. Because at the end of the movie, they're trying to fight Casey Jones, and Casey Jones locks him up in a that's right, yeah. in a box. 
So like you you finally get Bebop and Rocksteady, but you and, get it. and they barely even fight the turtles. That's all right. But you can take their act figure, action figures home and make them fight however you want. Yes, you can. That's the real part. What was your favorite moment in the film? Since you're starting out so negatively. Well, can I tell you what wasn't my favorite moment? No, that's the opposite was, of what I just asked for. <laughs> was Carmelo Anthony just like? I love what are that. You doing that here? was my second favorite what moment of the, the movie. Moment? When the when the ref goes because there's pizza on the court. No, the, not that part. Oh, that I'm what, talking that about where Will Arnett he's like pimping at the oh, party at the party with yeah, his model yeah, yeah. pretending that the model girl is like into him and is his girlfriend, but she really doesn't care about him. And then he's like talking to. Uh, Giving Carmelo like advice Anthony. and stuff, yeah. Like you and me, Carmelo Anthony, we're on the same level. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, oh god, the last thing I want is a Vern Fer- Fernwick movie. And you got it. I want less Vernon. And you got it, Vern the Falcon. Less the Falcon, the more Falcon. the turtles. My two favorite moments in the movie. Second favorite moment, which I was about to say, was when the turtles are above. Uh, was it Madison Square Gardens, right? eating pizza in like the over like behind the jumbotron and they drop a slice onto the court and then one of the basketball players trips on it and he slides and then the ref's like hey and he's like ref there's a pizza on the court there's a pizza and he's like hey man welcome to new york that's a great moment right yeah and then the second best moment in this movie what casey jones looking wistfully at his uh police uh, uh like the fbi or whatever and being like, one day I'm gonna be a detective. <laughs> that was awesome. No, that was the best acting that was Stephen bad. Amell's ever given me, and I love it. No, that was that great. was almost as good as that was like same acting level. Like I felt like he was channeling, um, what's his name, uh, Ernie Reyes Jr. in uh, you know in Secret of the Ooze. I felt like his acting here wasn't as good as the Arrow. Whoa. Maybe it's because his dialogue. <laughs> it was the dialogue. It was not good. <laughs> it was the dialogue, yeah. Yeah, you can only do what you um, have to work with. I like the turtles. I like the, the design of the turtles. Good. I like the design of Bebop and Rocksteady. I, they look good. I like Seamus, too. Seamus did a good job for his human parts. That's That, to me, would be the like the bright parts of this movie, is like the guy who played Bebop, uh, Bebop and, um, and Seamus. I thought... They were great. Like, their voice work was awesome, and even their work in, like, live action, they just had, like, this chemistry, yeah. both of them. Way like, better you than... you really believe them. Tyler Perry, who was horrible. I didn't think Tyler Perry was horrible. He was so bad. If he anything, so I bad. thought Megan and Fox... the fact that we have to look at his fucking stupid mustache, if they were gonna make another movie before he turns into a fly, it really makes me sad. They should have turned him into a fly at the end I don't, of this movie. I don't think he was that bad. I, th- I actually thought... I love Stephen Amell, but I thought, like, Stephen Amell and Megan Fox were probably, like, and, like, Will Arnett. We're just wasted. Yeah, Megan Fox was really wasted. I, I I can't remember where she goes in the second half of the movie, but, like, you know, after the first half, but... I enjoyed it, though. Like, the more I look back on it, like, it was the, okay. the moments that were fun and stupid, I had a lot of fun with those moments. Like, the, the sewer... The shooting sewer cans through the garbage truck. Oh, I love when you Mikey know? Mikey has the, 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 the yeah, yeah everyone nunchucks. loves the nunchucks. That was, that was fun. Like the moments it did right, did right. Like the random teleporting. I like the way they just inserted like comic book science, like just like right into the. Middle I thought of the it was movie. awesome when they um when they yeah. were when they all came in the bikes and stuff, and then they spread out and they start blowing up all the cars. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, the when is, they jumped out of the plane, uh, I don't think you needed that. That was a fun moment. Like, I don't see why you need, like, planes and, like, snow stuff in a turtle story. <laughs> uh, you don't remember the video but game? I'm just they saying. They had, like, snow levels. I know, but I just think you don't need it in the movies. Like, I feel like it's... That's the extra, like, 30 million you're putting on this movie that you could be making in profit. Maybe. Put them in a sewer. <laughs> Scene, more scenes in a sewer, please. A Sewers s- are cheap. The set. I just kind of felt like there wasn't that much to the story where like the second one was like there's these three artifacts that we need we gotta put them together so that we can open up a portal to Dimension X and then that's pretty much it I felt like there was a little bit more to the plot in the first one even though like the first one um, you know there was too much Megan Fox in it Mm -hmm. but I felt like at least there was more I don't know felt a little bit more depth there to the story 
Where this one seemed more like it could have been like an episode. No, the first one actually. A cartoon episode. I'll say this about the first one, even though it like you know had a lot of missteps, it did sort of have like heart in a way. You know, it had some sort of heart. I mean, it wasn't like wholesome, they, but it was. You they, know. You know, maybe that's what was lacking in this movie. Like, one moment that had a lot of heart. Like, yeah. like no, nothing was as good as, like, Raphael, like, talking to his brothers as they're about to die. Yes. You know? Like, that sort of epicness. That, you know? you know, towards the end of the movie, that, that got you, you know? that There was nothing, like, that emotional, like, in this movie. Yeah. This movie was just and more And even, pop. too, the, the whole thing about, like, oh, maybe we can turn human if we have this. Oh, like, that never they went pay, anywhere. They never, they never went anywhere. It never paid off. It never paid off. They didn't do anything with it. Yes. Like, what was the point? What was the point? <laughs> You should have cut it all out. Cut it all out. What's the point? Yeah, you should have made him, like, human for a second, right? Yeah, give them, or at least, like, give themselves, like, a glimpse of what it would look yeah. like if they were human. I don't know. I don't know. Do why whatever, reference it if you're not going to do anything? Do whatever cliche yeah. you want to sell the kids. I don't give a crap. <laughs> but why reference it if you're not going to do yeah, it at all? Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. Um, Maybe they figured they would have to spend another 10 minutes. So minute? that was Turtles 2, Out of the Shadows, now to be how quickly many, many, put um, back into the shadows. How many turtle shells do you give it? Uh, out of four turtle shells? Out of five. Out of five. Also, oh, Venus de Milo is included. Then. Venus de Milo is included. <laughs> five turtle shells. Five turtle shells. Um, okay, we have to rate them all then. So that we have like, yeah. a barometer. Yeah. Okay, so the original turtles film. Original. Oh, wait, you have we, we're, we're rating all the turtle films we have right to, now? Because we have to give them a barometer. Okay, well, the original turtles film. Because cause I, I could say I could say three, and you'll be like, oh. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. But if you okay. know that the original turtles... Is a five. It's gotta for be me. a five. It's a fiver. The original turtles gotta be a five. Super okay. Five shells. Yes, five shells. Original turtles. Yes. Elias Codius. Yes. Corey Feldman. Other famous people. <laughs> <laughs> Judith uh, Hogue. Judith Hogue, there you go. Um Turtles Two, Secret of the Ooze. I'm gonna go four and a half. Four and a half? Four and a half. That's too too much. That's too much. That's too high. See, I was trying to be generous because I have so much nostalgia for it. Well, you know, solid four. You're gonna go lower. Oh my Maybe. god, he's gonna go lower. He's gonna go lower. See, we're not rating it on fun. We're not. We're not rating it on fun. It, we're rating, rating on, on quality. Like how? No, great it's is your the personal movie? feeling. It's your personal feeling. I mean, your personal feeling is involved as well. No, it's your personal. It's but you personal. gotta admit, it's not as good as the first one. It's a personal recommendation. No, it's not. It's at That's least, why I took off a half point. It's at least... Half a shell. One turtle shell less. One turtle shell No, but it has... But I think it has things... See, I'd originally think it's one turtle shell less. It is. Then I think it has vanilla ice. Then I think it has toka and razor. That's worth... But the turtles never use a, their weapons. That's worth half a shell. And they barely fight. It has a great coming joke with Splinter. Oh, Come on. No. That's what? worth half a show. What is it? You don't know it? I don't remember. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh. Okay, so the okay. turtles. The, hey, no, no. Uh, what's her name? Uh, April gets back to her apartment, and they're like, oh, we were just watching you on, on, uh, on TV, April. And then April goes, where's Master Splinter? What's he been up to? And then uh, he comes down, and he, like, just, like, like sneaks into the frame and he goes coming to oh. a decision <laughs> yeah yeah I remember yeah. that Danny Danny, that, Danny told me that that's like her <laughs> <Come> favorite <laughs> joke that like when she got older she's like I can never watch this movie again in the same way without seeing that hearing that yeah. joke so because of that I give it four and a half shells no it's a four shell to me four shell no you you brought it up because you I thought I originally said four shells for you but then you said three and a half no, I didn't say three and a half. You said you were you. Uh, you I'll play back the really? audio. You said three and a half originally. Four, four. I'll give it four. four. There we four. go. That's a smart move. TMNT three, Turtles in Time. Two. It's not that bad. Two. Two shells. It's at least two and a half shells. Two shells. Two and a half shells. It's not. It's two shells, a girl shells. in a pizza place. Give me, give me a, <laughs> give, give me an <laughs> argument. Why is it? Why is it? Give me an argument. Convince me. It's got samurais. That's awesome. It's got samurais. It's got samurais. It's got like a. Pr a it's got turtles riding on horses. It's got turtles on horses. <laughs> yeah, and it's got Asian people in their underwear randomly. That's a lot of Asian people in their underwear. 
Huh? But it's got time travel. Time travel is so cool. It's got time travel, yeah, but it's not really, like, fun, like, accessible time <laughs> travel. It's kind of like you're stuck somewhere because you held a lamp in an antique store. <laughs> That was cool. It was time travel. And you have, like, this weird, creepy white guy who's the villain in this Asian story. <laughs> and he might be a descendant of who? I don't think they said he was... Yeah, he's... I thought I always thought he was descendant of, like, Shredder for some reason or something like that. I don't think so, like, because was, Shredder... I think that Shredder's he's not white. I know, exactly. That's why it was weird. No. I think that he's descended of someone. No. I think he's someone's descendant. What I remember was that, like, the little kid Yoshi... Some people thought that maybe that might be um, the descendant of, like, Master Splinter's master. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, um, uh, what, what else? Oh, the, the 2014 TMNT? I think that's three and a half shells. No, that isn't the next one. I'm ashamed. That is next one. I'm ashamed. Oh, the 2007 one? Yes, but that's 2007 a, I only TMNT. count live action movies. That was theatrical, baby. That was theatrical. Yeah, but only that was theatrical. Action. It doesn't matter. Live action. That came out in theaters. We're talking about theatrical films. That is what we're talking about. That movie, and that's the sequel to Turtles 2, 1, and 3. Yeah. They Supposedly. reference all of them. They yeah. reference all of them. Yeah. So, with that being said, I would give that one three and a half stars. <gasps> 2008, I believe, is the year. TMNT. See, this is why I think we rated too, too high. Because can you really say that? Um, I would rather watch the fourth movie than the third movie. Yeah, but would you rather watch the fourth movie than the second movie? You rather watch the second movie? But I have the fourth movie. I, don't know. I have the second movie rated higher than the fourth movie. I would. Yeah. You would. Yeah. I mean, I would see. This is where it gets tricky because I would because it's live action. Um, but you don't think the story of the fourth one might be a little bit stronger? Patrick Stewart, pretty good. It's no stronger. No, I think it's hard to compete with the Shredder because Shredder's so good when he's in the movies. He, well, he's so good for Turtles One. You know, he's so like. Like, Turtles 1, like, in a wrestling parlance, like, Turtles 1 did so much to make, like, Shredder a badass. Like, he comes in, everyone's doing his bidding, he's the master of the one person no one can get to respect them, teenagers, alright? Yeah. He owns <laughs> them, he's, he makes them all his bitch. Yeah. Okay, they do his bidding, they don't listen to you anymore, listen to him. Then, he, like, goes on a promo, he fucking rants about he's their father and they fucking need him and all this shit. Then he faces the turtles. He whoops all their fucking asses. He fought. They fought. And he, he, you know, he actually first he gets their asses whooped by his own people. Then he steals Splinter, fucks up Splinter. Then when the turtles finally face him, he fucks up the turtles. Okay, and then only Splinter with like a quick half move and like quick reaction topples him, beats him. You know. Well, because he pissed off Shredder so much, he he wasn't thinking. He was just rushing no. He antagonized him. him. Yeah, yeah. He was just rushing he, he, at him. He beat him mentally. But I think this is gonna be a whole entire so turtle cool. podcast. Probably, probably. So I guess the first FU was to DC. <laughs> this time on DCFU <laughs> <laughs> on this <laughs> last edition of PCFC and the first edition of DCFU. We talk nothing about DC. <laughs> Woo. Uh, so he does all that, and then the second movie, what do you do? You dig him out of the garbage. He still has the kids, only now you're watching him, like, recruit the kids, and he has to, like, basically tell the kids to respect him, and it's not as formidable anymore. It was, like, out of the shadows, where right. he, he fights no one again. Yeah. He doesn't fight anyone. Then at the last <laughs> second, he sprinkles some, some ooze on him, and now he's Kevin Nash. Now he's Kevin Nash. And he gets beaten up by himself and a peer for being too stupid. Like, the only person that the Turtles beat in the original Turtles films was, like, foot soldiers. Like, the Shredder always beat himself. <laughs> Except for when Splinter beat him, but, but still he was kind himself. of yeah he was still kind of beating himself. Um, but that's what makes the Shredder awesome that they can't the they can't beat the Shredder. That's crazy. And um, even in the 2014 one, Megan Fox beat Shredder. Right? When she kicked him in the face, she did. Yeah, she kicked him in the face. They still couldn't beat Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's what you get for WrestleMania. <laughs> Turtles versus Shredder. I want to see yeah. him go down. 
Um, I'm trying to find out if a walker from TMNT3 was ever referenced as being related to someone. Because my childish mind always assumed that, like, no. he's a bad guy, he's so white. all the bad guys are related. No, he's cause white. Because that's how bad things happen to people. That makes no sense. He's white. Um... Yeah. Hey, little Steven didn't see color lines, okay? okay. <laughs> he lived in a perfect world. We ate rainbows for breakfast. Um, so, okay, so, tw- so 2014, what's the rating? Oh, but I didn't, I didn't do the cartoon one. Okay, 2007? 2007, 8, something like that. I'm giving that one. I really, I really liked it a lot. And I yeah. liked and I liked the I liked the things with um, Leo versus like Raph, Raph and stuff. That yeah. was great. And I like Raph um, having like his own like side, like you know vigilante. The only mission. thing I don't know if I liked it as much was like, like the gargoyles coming to life stuff, and it was like a weird villain. Like you know they picked, for the turtles, yeah. Yeah, they could have gone with more of the classic villains. Yeah, they could have just had mutants or anything, you know. That's yeah, um, I feel you. So maybe just because of that, maybe I'll agree with you three and a half. Because, yes. you know, Secret of the Ooze, you still got the Shredder. You got Toko Razar. Got the Ice Ice Baby. You got Tatsu. Oh, you got to bring Tatsu. Got Tatsu. You got to bring oh. Tatsu. He, I, wish, I wish he could be my, like, if I was, like, a professional rapper, he would be my Flavor Flav. Huh? <laughs> just have Tatsu rolling next to you and have this baggy... You know, gi or kimono, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> Ninja, vanish. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so 2014. 2014. Uh, I'm gonna say three and a half. I think it's on the same level as you know. 2007 animated one. Yeah, yeah, because you know the the turtles characters like you know, like I don't like how much. April O'Neil there is in the movie and how they rewrote, you know, retcon some things and stuff like that. So I'm still holding grudges over that stuff. But overall, I like but the here's elevator the thing. scene. Here's I the like thing. The I'm a, I'm a, I might get you to come down on that 2007 one. Because I'm going to say this. Because right now you have them both rated equally. Okay. If I put both movies in front of you, which one are you picking? Which one are you going to pop in? Got to be the 2014 one, baby. You got the Shredder. You got Splinter. I'm actually more curious now to see the 2000 whatever one because I haven't seen that one in such a while. It has like kitsch value. I want to see how they did it again though. I bet you only watched that movie one time. No, I've seen that movie like three times. I bet you've seen the 2014 one more. No? Mm. No, I think I've seen them both around three times. Probably. Three, four times. I think it's pretty even. Yeah, you can't beat me. You can't beat me. My, my, my defenses are unstoppable right now. Okay. My turtle ratings are strong. My turtle powers of great magnitude. Oh, this is too hard. <laughs> this is just assigning shells to, to fictional films. Come on, it's not rocket science. So you think Secret of the Ooze was better than the 2014 one? Yes. I'd rather watch that than the 2014 one. What did I, what did I say? Three and a half? Three and a half. Three and a half. I'll still hold my... I'll only go three. No, I'll go three and a half. No, it's not that. I mean, I guess I could go three and a half. You convince me. Whatever. Yes! You I am me. the convincer. Yeah. Okay, now. But I don't think that Turtles 3 is only two shells. That's too low. I think two and a half shells. Well, you're I gotta get you to come you up half a shell. You already said that. You're, I'm not gonna come up. You need to come up half a shell. I don't need to come up! <laughs> We're not friends anymore. I'm gonna... St- no, I don't say that. Fine, yeah. half a shell. Fine. You gotta give me a half a shell. Fine, right, there's here. half a shell. Okay. Two, two and a half shells. Turtle it's three. not that bad. It's not two. Sh- yeah, okay, fine. Two point six shells. If you had to watch coming out of our shells or Turtles three, what are you watching? Don't give me that option. I'm watching Turtles three. I love coming out of our shells. Oh my though. god, that's so fun. Turtles uh, coming out of our shells gets five for me because it's no, so you're crazy. Funny. I've watched that thing at least twice or three times. No, like the entire I love thing. Coming out you of could sit through the, the songs, thing. the songs, the, like the songs, not the inner parts, but the songs. That's what I'm saying. Like, can you? Sit? I love the songs. They're so good. We're coming out of our shells. I can't wait to do the radiate episode of this because I'm gonna put so many coming out of our shell yeah, songs but, on this. Yeah, but don't pretend that you sat through the whole entire thing. 
You sat through the whole entire thing, even the acting parts and stuff. No, I've skimmed and I've watched exactly. a lot of it. You skimmed. It. I've watched a lot but of Turtles it. Turtles Three, you've actually sat through it. Yeah, and I wish exactly. I hadn't. I wish I so hadn't. So Turtles Three. Why does why does it's not the worst? Why does April O'Neil have to go back in time? When you didn't even have the original <laughs> actress. Why? Why? Because it's boring. It's horrible. That's not It is. And Casey Jones I don't want to see April O'Neil in a cage, hanging in little shorts, okay, talking to a rat, yes. and imagining that it's Splinter's relative. That's not cool. And Casey Jones was in it, and he was bad. So Remember who was, was that bad English guy? So Oh, so there was a bad English guy. Who was related to someone? And well, was... he looked exactly like Casey Jones. Remember? See, so there was. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking of then. That's Maybe what, that's what I was trying to say. That's but you remember that, somebody. right? Like Casey Jones was yes. also in the past. Yes, I he do. was like an evil English guy. I do. He worked for the main. For the evil. blonde guy for Walker. Yeah, for Walker. Oh, so that makes sense. That's what I was thinking of in Maybe. my in my mind. Okay, yes, perfect. Mystery solved. Because when she first saw him, she was like confused. Like Casey, is that you? So yeah. now out of the shadows. Out of the shadows. I'm going to give it... A solid three. A solid three. So it's, so it's going half a shell down from 2014. Yes, but half a shell up from Turtles 3. If you have to pick Turtles 3 or Out of the Shadows, you're going to pick Out fair. of the Shadows. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Yes. That's fair. I'll allow it. Okay. That's. I think that on the DCFU, I think we have just correctly rated all of the Turtles films. So Turtles 1, 5. Yes. Turtles 2, 4. 4. Turtles 3, 2.5. 2.5. Turtles uh, TM 2007. TMNT. TMNT 2007. 3.5. Uh, 3.5. Turtles. Uh, 2014, 3.5. Yeah, no, uh, no special name. And Out of the Shadows, 3. 3. Okay. Whoa. And so ends this podcast. About Aww. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And we had so many things. On the DCFU. We look forward to many more episodes with you. Wow. Me, Steven, your host, and Mr. J, who I don't think I introduced to be in this podcast. <laughs> hey, that was a pretty good letter. Watch out. <laughs> that was a pretty good letter. Watch out. Have you been practicing? <laughs> Let me show you all my toys. <laughs> now, my, my favorite of the Suicide Squad letter lines was... Uh, was him? Was after he kisses his ring, and you go, I can tell you really meant that. <laughs> really? He said that? Yeah, after he kisses his ring, and he like, sits on his lap. No, no, no. The the guy from, uh, the guy who works in the prison in Bell Reef. Oh, yeah. He kisses the Joker's ring, and then the Joker sits on his lap, <laughs> and he's like, I can tell you really meant that. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. That was awesome. <laughs> Next time we sit together, we will be talking about a great DC film. Directed by the wonderful David Ayer. Training Day, sucker. Star what? Oh, I thought you were saying we're in a review training day. No, no, no. No, but he, he did, did direct did training, training day. day, yes. My ninja. Whoa. <laughs> King Kong ain't got nothing on Suicide Squad. <laughs> um, so, that's the thing. We're going to talk about Suicide Squad next time. We're gonna have a great time doing that, me and Mr. So Jay. we're just skipping all the other summer movies. No, we'll talk about everything, but I'm just I'm trying okay. to tease people about what they can expect. Okay, they can expect to hear us talk about. We still uh, gotta do Ghostbusters. But, uh, we gotta talk about Ghostbusters. How that all went down. We still have to talk about a Captain America Civil War because we ain't never spoken about that. Right. And the internet's eagerly anticipating this information. Obviously, yes. this late into the summer. I mean, it's summer. It's fall now. So whatever. And X Men: Age of Apocalypse are all Whoa. comic book films that we need to. Talk about and Star on this Trek podcast. And Star Trek and Star Trek. Once I finish it, because I watched, the, I paid yes, for a ticket to see yes. Star Trek, and I only saw the first forty minutes, and then I <laughs> fell asleep, and then my life got so busy, I haven't seen it yet. But I will see it okay. because I love Star Trek, and you that's what I am in my soul. You better. This has been an episode of DCFU. Uh, if you like the show, and that doesn't mean FU to DC. No, it means DC forever. FU. Forever Unlimited. Forever Unlimited. Okay. But you should say it. <laughs> DC, pause, F you. Yeah. So you're effing someone. Yeah, not DC. Forever Unlimited. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Perfect. Um, Why don't we just put make a sure and to people tweet, can pick No, they can't pick. The name. Tweet us, at Vundacast, okay. or at Vundablog. Tell us how much you love our new name. Um... Okay. Keep on listening to the Vundacast. Keep on keeping on. 
Keep on keeping keep on. Keep on trucking. Keep on living. Did you hear about Matthew McConaughey's uh, YouTube account? Oh, uh, yeah, but why is everybody talking about it right now? Well, okay, because basically Matthew McConaughey, like, put up a YouTube account, like, at the beginning of summer or something like that, right? And he posted, like, ten videos or something to it, yeah. right? And, like, usually, like, celebrity YouTube accounts, like, they get, like... You know, millions of followers and stuff and he like didn't. that. He just got like a couple hundred thousand or something like that. Yeah. But then, like, People all, all but then all his videos are him talking. But he like he's doing it in his Matthew McConaughey way. So he starts off every bit. He starts off every every video blah, 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 every video by saying McConaughey here. How are you doing? And he just calls himself McConaughey, <laughs> McConaughey. <laughs> in the third person, right? The entire video. And it's just you know Matthew McConaughey's like fun. He's a fun personality. So he's silly. So everyone's just like, oh my god, it's so, like, you know, dorky and blah, blah, blah. It's just silly. But it's basically him doing all charity stuff, so. That's cool. Yeah. Charity's cool. All right, all right, all right. Say, uh, got any uh, parting words for our listening audience, Mr. J? Ninja, vanish. Well, remember, kids, when, uh, when you're gonna, you know, raise some ooze babies from you know scratch make sure you account for at least 15 to 16 years for them to grow up mentally right so that they can be ready for battle then and while picking up the turtles don't rub your eyes and become blind like daredevil oh <laughs> suck on that casada suck it wundercast give yeah. it up for wundercast man what an adorable name Thank you.